Metal is impressed, so am I. <laughs> Hello and welcome to RC Shim in the hangar. Today we will take a close look at the Monport GA 30 Watt fiber laser. Not the MOPA version, but the normal version. What's MOPA? What's normal? I will explain a lot that I've learned about lasers while researching for this thing. It's not my first laser cutter engraver. I own the Creality Falcon 22 watt, the X-Tool S1 40 watt conventional moving laser head. And also tested the Laser Pack 4, which has a dual laser. By the end of this hopefully short and concise video, you will know if this thing is something for you, what to expect from these kinds of powers. This is a mid-class 30 watt Galvo laser. Little mirrors move the laser beam instead of the whole laser head moving around, which is way faster. Disclaimer out of the way, Monport sent me this unit for review for free. They wanted me to check the video before I posted, which I opposed. Technically, I signed a contract, but I will try it this way. Anyway, it's really important for my channel to stay unbiased, to stay independent. So I didn't show this to them. They just wanted to check for errors. But yeah, I double check my content. If there are any errors, I will post an update in the comments below. The most important specs are the maximum height you can engrave on. The maximum area you can engrave on is 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. But you have a lot of room so you can move your object and maybe do multiple passes, multiple engravings like little tattoos on a larger build thing. You have the freedom to do it here. You cannot do this on enclosed printers. So that's the difference here. You have this mounting thing is bought this additional 50 euros fan and the hose which goes out of the window. And this is kind of a must because there are some toxic fumes that can happen if you burn onto leather or plastic. Uh, it just stinks in the, in the least worst case or it can be toxic. So make sure you have good ventilation. The build plate I engraved the 15 by 15 centimeters here directly on the aluminum. 100,000 mil per min and 10% was enough to engrave this area here. Overall, the build quality is really, really nice. Connector for protective cover and for the rotary axes. Power and power switch are self-explanatory. It's a bit of a weird design decision to have the USB plug so far in. But once this is connected, you will not think about this again. The moment that the power cable feeds this thing with power, it's already connected via USB to my PC. This is the fat laser switch and then this thing gets rather noisy. So that's one little annoyance during the laser's activity. It needs a lot of cooling, obviously. It's a bit loud, but you can turn this on and off and you only need this for operating the height or for autofocusing. The autofocus point is in front here and not in the center. The focus is a bit slow, but it's exact. It needs to be a single dot and not two dots. When it's turned off, you can manually adjust the height very accurately. I found a good web page with a lot of settings. And previously I only had two watt on the thousand nanometers laser from LaserPack and this one had 30, so I have way more possibilities. It has a frequency range of 30 to 60 kilohertz. The engraver incurs is 0.01 millimeters. The positional accuracy is plus minus 0.1 micrometer. The engraved speed is 10,000 millimeters per second. Which kind of materials can you engrave on? Aluminum, brass, carbide, gold, silver, steel, stone, like granite, granite, marble, titanium, tungsten, and hard plastics. You shouldn't use it either because of the flame inferno or the toxic hell that breaks loose unless you have really good exhaust artificial later because it has some toxic stuff in it beryllium brome chlor pvc plastics paper and cardboard and wood has a good chance of going into flames i tested a lot i mean they are standard Test thing is these little aluminum cards coated with color and you burn away the color and get really really nice results. This time we're shooting with 120,000 speed and 20% power. And look at that, maybe we could go even faster with higher power settings. Check this out, it's a firework. 
Yeah, and the speed is quite impressive. And bear in mind, I use 600 lines per inch, so that's quite a high resolution. So with a conventional moving head laser type of thing, you would probably engrave forever. And once again, this is just a JPEG image with some clever contrast enhancements. And it shoots all the way to the top. Bare effect. I played around a bit with the laser and already produced this nice quality digital microscope. I used it to get really good close-ups of the things that I engraved to see how accurate the laser really is and it's damn accurate. Now for the steel marking I did a clean, which looks really nice, with 180,000 and power of 30. And now with about the tenth of the speed I will try the steel marking. I was really impressed by the cleanup pass and then the slower or different speed setting really gives a good contrast image. So maybe it's enough to just use the slower settings for your markings of steel. I wish I could cut it now, but yeah, you need a, a plasma cutter now for these kinds of steel, I suppose. A cool way to personalize your tools. <laughs> this is now aluminum 90,090 power. Speed of 10,000. Oh, and it's much deeper. Now we are running 5000 mil, so quite slow and 95% power and the cleanup run. In the shimmering situation here you see the more powerful versions removed a lot of the surface and you also feel this. So just for engraving serial numbers or stuff I would take the first bet here. This is almost not to be felt. This I feel already and this one, a cleaning run on aluminum, it makes it look like brushed aluminum. And I'm sure you can use like 45 degrees or multiple passes to achieve different patterns on aluminum. But that really looks good and if you now engrave something on this square, a way better contrast and that's what I want to try now. I'm really happy with how this looks now, compared to having it just on bare aluminum. We should really aim for 600 dpi. Not so nice looking low resolution of 254 dpi. We need a full power run. This is as low as 500. It smells like Wunderkerzen. It's like really nice sparks all around. Power. Now the whole aluminum plate all the way over here is quite warm. It really sticks out in shiny situation, so it's really a deep engrave now. I will try to show this on the microscope as well. Yeah, and this is really really nicely visible. Basically this burns away the color with these support thingies here. You can really align it nicely. Just remember to change the text now. <laughs> and I'm quite happy how this turned out. Labeling these tools. If I aligned them all this way from the beginning and just copy the text, I could have done this all in one run. For larger changes in object height, I do use the autofocus. I find it a bit slow and the autofocus point is here and not in the center. In the center you can then see if this is correct. Works quite nice. Just remember that it's this point here where it's measured. Yeah, something like this semi-transparent plastic box works only half good. I increase the DPI, it's 30% power. Now it's like with a permanent marker. Oh, 
it's not so bad actually. Of course it stinks, but it's quite a good labeling. It has a bit of a Ausgefrauen did my song of that. <laughs> Trying to cut copper here, 0.6 mil copper. Used multiple passes and slow speeds, highest power. It gets really hot, so the metal gets color changes. Yeah, but yeah, you can you can bend it, and because for more complex cuts it might be a problem, or you need 10 more runs. This is a 15 by 35 millimeters engraving, so very tiny and a lot of those tiny details. I like it on copper. Found this from my last review with a two watt laser. Now I made some, yeah, 6,000 millimeters per minute. 20% power, which is already way more. <laughs> now I use 100, 100, so quite slow at 100% power. A lot of smoke happens. It's clearly way too much. But will it cut through it? <laughs> yeah, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> it went right through the wood. It's really a powerful. Doing a material test and the smoke makes the laser look really cool. Doing a material test now on PLA. Hopefully that's not too much toxic shit going on there. Oh, that looks so cool. Done. Yeah, that's quite useful, I'd say. Framing in this mode is quite nice, although the laser could be a bit faster. And that's just frame. Pelican case I try now with 20,000 millimeters per minute and 3% start, which is very fast and finished. If you want to fill it, I just did a line engrave. Easy way to label stuff. Wow, this is speed. Yeah. That was the speediest setting up there from 10 to 100 percent. Here is slow mo of a second pass with more power and sped up to about real time. On stone, you need multiple passes just. Here, a little experiment where I engraved very tiny text on coated aluminum, and the ruler below shows single millimeters, so those golden blocks are millimeters, just for your reference. What are the different kinds of lasers and what are they good for? The more conventional lasers that move around usually have around 450 nanometers of wavelengths. Diode lasers, they have little semiconductor emitting sources uh, that generate light. It's good for cutting paper, wood and so forth. Then on the other end of the spectrum we have CO2 lasers. They have a little tube with CO2 in it. It needs to be cooled so they often have water coolants. It sounds very complicated and it's a large machine and so forth. They have a way longer wavelengths, 10,600 nanometers to 10.6 micrometers. A very long wavelength. This means more power and they can cut through Acrylic, so in industrial applications, tier 2 lasers are often used. Monport, however, check out their website. They have quite compact desktop sized CO2 lasers now. And the third type of lasers, and he's, he's one of them, are the fiber lasers. They have a solid state laser source and they are usually around 1064 nanometers of wavelengths. And this is a wavelength that is especially good for engraving on metals, on metals, on stone, not so good on paper or on wood. It doesn't really work on the lower power settings. It looks like it doesn't reflect. So only if you go really slow and really powerful, you can burn wood. Burn it, maybe you can cut it, but I 
don't actually think so. Yeah, and it's the same as on wood. You see it's doing something, but it's not really working that well. So, so don't get this in the expectation that you can cut wood or paper with it. Simply it doesn't really work. And then if you increase the power, it instantly burns it to death. So <laughs> watch out. For this you need the 450 nanometers. And then on the fiber lasers there are two separate groups. The standard fiber lasers and the Mopar fiber lasers. And Mopar is Master Oscillator Power Amplifier. And what they do, they cost 1000 euros more. <laughs> and they can have variable pulse duration. It just helps you with getting different colors on stainless steel for example. So that sounds nice. If you need this and if this is your main application, go for a Mopar laser. They have something that looks Exactly the same as this, costs thousand dollars more, and then it's the Mopa laser. Uh, it has the Mopa attachment to the product name. So really good hardware. That's uh, one point I also stumbled about this. When I got it, I struggled in getting it to work with light burn, the de facto standard in laser cutting and engraving. Light burn, it's not cheap, but believe me, it's well worth the money. So if you get this laser, right away check the license or if you have a license maybe you can go cheaper with upgrading to a Galvo license. They supply something on the USB stick that is not very user friendly so only for basic stuff and I wouldn't use it. If you spend the money on this machine don't go cheap on the software. You have no Wi-Fi here you just have USB but that's totally fine for me you can have a longer USB cable. If you connect it via USB to your PC you need to follow some special steps so Lightburn really detects this scanner and it was a bit tedious their manual is wrong <laughs> found out how it works and that's good for you because i now have a very easy to follow guide it's done in like 10 minutes maximum it was one downfall they had an old jc fiber controller board in their manual the new laser that i got had a bsl fiber a so-called c cut device instead of an easy cut device as soon as i plug in the laser and jump to the device manager. It will have no real driver, but for me it, it was called C laser or C cut device. So we will not touch it here. Instead, we go to the USB drive that they supply and install this Cypress driver. Run as admin, just hit next and install this driver finish. You see in the background it changed something, it refreshed and you should have a Cypress FX2LP sample device. This is how you know that your laser is set up in Windows correctly and now we need to manually set it up in Lightburn which is also just a few clicks. I want to go to devices, find my laser. Unfortunately it doesn't work at the recording of this video, maybe it works in the future. We create manually. Now we need to choose BSL Fiber and we need to import a configuration file. Import, choose the USB stick and here is this BSL app and here under config you have the LMC par CFG. So this is the correct config file. I want to open this and this has all the settings, the correct settings defined. Hit next. One port, GA 30 watt, this is on it, finish. Okay, here you see, and this is the important thing here. It needs to say ready here, and that's all. But if you know how it's done, it's done in five minutes. You're welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> so it's not that much plug and play on the software side, but once you are past this, the hardware really works nice, and it's really nice to have this tool in your workshop. And if you're a little company, you can really increase possibilities for producing decorative objects for really fine engraving on metal. So a lot of possibilities. I think by now you have a good idea what this thing can do for you. You will decide for yourself if you want to buy it or not. If you buy it, consider using my links. It helps me through commissions. Those are affiliate links. However, I try really hard to keep my, my channel un unbiased, not unfocused, unbiased, in focus, but unbiased. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.